This is the guide I wish I had before I tried to download Arch Linux. So today I'm just going to explain the wiki, explain how to install it manually, and kind of just little tips and tricks about Arch Linux. So yeah. So if we go ahead here, I've spun up a little virtual machine. And um, yeah, so simply if you're trying to install Arch Linux through, um, let's say just properly on your bare metal, um, bare metal machine, or for a virtual box, there's going to be some things confusing because you probably just don't know. It kind of assumes that you have some sort of knowledge. So yeah, now um, first they'll tell you, oh, you know, verify and stuff. Just down and download it through a uh, torrent client and I'm 90% sure it just verifies it automatically. Um, you know, prepare it, you know, do this. You know, it's the basic stuff. Um, so yeah, no, number one. Everything in these is basically just a command. And you just want to type it after the hashtag because the hashtag is imitating the hashtag here. So there's a hashtag space and then, you know, here it's saying ls. ls is a command that just says list. It just lists. So if I type an ls here, it shows nothing because there's no programs. But if I create a program such as touch hi, or not a program, but I just created a text file and I, um, I ls it, it just lists hi. Okay, if I touch, this is a text file. Then when I press ls, oh, I have two files called hi and this is a text file. So yeah, that's all that ls is. Load keys is just a command specific to Arch Linux um, or to the installation process. So this is not a command you're going to be using that much. Now, okay, connect to the internet. This kind of stuff is kind of self-explanatory. Um, you kind of just go through the wiki like, okay, if you want to do Wi-Fi, then you do this, you do that. Honestly, if you can do it for ethernet, it's just much easier. Um, system clock, you know, you just you kind of just follow this stuff. Now, partitioning disk, this one, I don't know why the wiki suggests you to use F disk. F disk, in my opinion, is just quite complicated. You want to do CF disk. CF disk, just very, I don't know, self explanatory in what you do. So, um, and usually, okay, for example, here it says select the label type. If you're installing this on your bare metal machine, it kind of just does it automatically, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you don't have a choice, but in this case, I think the correct choice mm, on a virtual machine is GPT, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it's just very, you know, it's this is called TUI, T-U-I, TUI. And it kind of just, it's a lot easier. F-Disk is the exact same, but it just doesn't have this UI. And um, again, here it has a lot of freedom with partitioning your disk and stuff. Honestly, you know, this is a pretty good example, is you want to partition it to have a boot, so let's do this. Um, so dev slash EFI underscore system partition. Actually, BIOS, I think, hmm, I actually don't know which one we are. I think, I, okay, we'll try this. Um, if we want to, you know, let's give it, so it says at least 300 megabytes. So we'll do 500 MIB. Oh, okay, wait, M, okay, so M is for M, uh, megabytes. Okay. Okay, so 500 M, um, we give it 500 megabytes. All it is is, and then we can choose the type. So it says Linux file system. We'll just give it EFI. So EFI system is right there. Then we create a new partition. So now it says the swap partition. Let's do the swap partition by being, so it says more than five, let's do two gigabytes, you know? And then all you do is you go to type, you go to swap. It's just very self-explanatory and you just follow what it does. So I, I can't find it, but let's just do that. Do the, you know, the, so now this is the root. We'll just do the rest and Linux file system. That's fine. Or it says Linux dash 86. I swear Linux file system fine. And then all you do is you just write, are you sure you want to do it? Yes. Boom. That's it. So yeah, that's the tool that I always use for partitioning my files for my or hard drive, should I say. Very easy. Um, formatting, you kind of just do this. You can format it multiple ways, but honestly, I just, I'd follow, just read what it says. I'd follow what it, you know, what it suggests. So ext4, I think ext4 is the Linux file system. You want to do that most of the time. And if you've got a swap, then you format for the swap. Mounting, mounting, all you're doing is just putting a hard drive and allowing it to be accessed at a certain point uh, to explain that briefly. And then, um, here you're just installing pack strap is just a script install base package. Yeah. Just kind of explanatory. And, um, 
base. So yeah, okay, I have a lot of tools. Now I'm not sure if you have, okay. So what happens is on the live USB, you're gonna have a lot of programs pre-installed um, for you to access, but that doesn't mean that necessarily you will have these programs available later on. Now, uh, for example, you know, it, it suggests here like things you wanna download because if you don't install it now, I, when you try and load into your operating system, into Arch Linux, you're gonna be like, oh no, I, I don't have a text editor, or oh, no, I don't have networking or something. So you wanna make sure you, you know, look it up what you want. So text editor, for example, I know that the installer naturally has Nano, which is, you could say the baby's little text editor, you know, for babies, you know, you can type and you can save and stuff. And then you have the real man, the real man's text editor, Vim. Now Vim, I remember I, I was watching a tutorial and he just told me, okay, you type in Vim, or I just followed what he, he said. I didn't know anything and I got I got destroyed. <laughs> so if you have to use Vim, if you decide to use Vim, just know that if you wanna exit, or yeah, okay, if you wanna exit, all you do is you type semicolon Q. That's it, you're out. If you're on Vim, if you wanna type, you press I and you can type. If you wanna stop typing, you press escape and you stop typing. You know, it's really as simple as that. Um, that's all you need to know for basics, but yeah. Oh, okay, if you wanna override, exclamation mark. If you wanna save, you, you know, let's say, uh, hi, and you wanna save the file, you press W, that saves it. Oh, W, hi, file, now it's saved as hi file. W, Q, save, quit. Yeah, very simple explanation of Vim, uh, but I wish I knew that. I wish I knew that before actually installing Arch. Um, yeah, so configure the system. Again, this stuff is, if you want like an actual explanation of what it does, I don't know, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know everything. A lot of this stuff I just kind of followed. But yeah, so example here, like you wanna create the lang file. So what it's telling you here is we wanna edit this file. So what you wanna do is you wanna to, probably you as a baby, you're gonna to have to type in nano, etc locale.conf and that means with the text editor nano access this file you access it oh, okay so i lang uh, equals c so let's do uh let's do what it says here en dash or underscore dot us or us dot utf dash eight and then once you saved it so if you want to save you have to type and if you see these little uh up what is this called? Like the little arrow. So you can see that it's like that little arrow pointing upwards. O. that means you press control, press control O, and then you press enter to save to that same file and then control X exits. Simple as that. And um, yeah, you put in your host name here. So it could be my host name or it could be, for example, if I um, show you my setup, my host name is Eardash. I'm pretty sure Eardash is my host name. Wait, I mean, if I check on my actual computer, let's see. Vim dash etc. dot hostname. Uh, oh, it's Arch Linux. Okay, never mind. So it's actually the second part. So this is the. Oh, okay. So this is my username. This is the username, and then it says add Arch Linux. That's why I wrote mine. Um, you can really do whatever. I like to keep it something related to my distro, or whatever setup I have. So on my laptop, that's got Arch on it. My hostname is at Arch top. And you can think of your host name as what other computers or networks are gonna view your computer as. So network, if a network like my internet looks at my computer, it's gonna say Artronix, not my username. So yeah, um, bootloader, honestly, just grub, I'd say, with the bootloader. Um, you know, there's multiple others, but I swear grub is just, you know, look at all the yeses, look at the other ones, um, I don't know anyone who doesn't use grub like just keep a grub, you know as a newbie That's all you need to know and um, Yeah, that's it if you I'm not gonna lie you should avoid videos you should avoid videos telling you what to what commands to type in and what to do because The wiki is always changing, you know, uh, maybe it hasn't changed in a couple months, but if it does um, Suddenly the installation process is different then those videos are not gonna be relevant anymore so don't watch a video on how to install Arch Linux, or if you do, make sure you do it on a virtual machine so you don't mess up your computer. And um, yeah, but certain programs, like if you wanna watch a video on how to install Grub, 
you know, might be easier, but just so you know, the wiki is genuinely one of the best resources you have. Although some of this like low level uh, stuff that's close to your like root to your like to the actual uh, brain of the computer, it's a little bit more complicated to install in the terms and stuff. Like I remember I was trying to download this and I was trying to type in ESP, but ESP is actually like a name of a directory, or something like that. Yeah. So you just want to be careful what you read and don't be afraid to make mistakes, you know, um, because from that you'll learn. But yeah, I think this is the video that I wish I had before trying to install uh, Arch Linux. This probably don't, won't cover everything, but I remember these were the big things. I was like, what the, like, I just didn't understand. But yeah, that's about it. Um, I hope this can help you. If it did, please leave a like, subscribe, and uh, comment what you thought or what I missed out or something else that you had, a you had trouble with when you were installing Arch Linux. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys later. Bye.